Welcome back again to the Sons of Liberty, folks. Uh, thank you for joining us today, and thank you for making us the number one and the number two show in 159 cities out of 65 different show hosts on Genesis Communication Networks. Only you can do that period. Okay. You did that. We did not do that, nor were we aspiring to be that, but we appreciate that. And we know why you're listening because you're listening to the resolve rather than just what the problems are. Now, listen, what I did folks is last week, someone had sent a video out of a representative from the 20th district in the state of Minnesota. Her name is Pam Altendorf. And uh, what's interesting is she was saying some pretty good things. And I thought, you know, what? we need to get her up on the radio program and share with the people as to what's going on in the state of Minnesota. And what I want to do is go ahead and welcome you first and foremost, Pam. And I think I've got you. Do I have you now, Pam? Hi, Bradley. Yep, I'm here. Thank you for having me. Yep, thank you for jumping on again with uh, such short notice. We Over the weekend, we were going to have you on, uh, actually on Friday, and the sound went down. That was probably the second or third time that's ever happened in the 23 years that we've been in ministry here. So, But with that said, I, I noticed and I was observing a video that someone had sent out in the state of Minnesota just concerning the lunacy going on at the Capitol. Can we just go ahead and just kind of itemize what's going on concerning how far out things are are becoming uh how these said representatives uh are assuming authority that's never been given unto them can we just go ahead and itemize them and have a conversation concerning this because this is happening across the united states of america it's just not the state of minnesota but again uh for some reason or another we're trying to in this state catch up to what's going on in michigan and in california so it's all yours and again thank you for joining us yeah, thank you for having me. I did post a video. You know, we are in omnibus bill season, and I think seven out of eight nights we were there on the floor till 11 or midnight, and I drive back and forth. I, w I got home at 1 a.m., and the whole way home I heard in my head my friend saying, you know, people want to hear from you, Pam. People want to know what's happening in Minnesota because the truth is the regular media is just not reporting so much of the crazy things that are happening here. And um, I heard that in my head. I got home, it was about 1 a.m. and in my garage, I'm like, I'm just gonna do a quick live video. And that really took off. And so I do think people in Minnesota wanna know what's happening. Um, but Bradley, when you ask, uh, can you list what's happening? I mean, how much do you have? Uh, because this is just crazy. And what's really unfortunate is, you know, the Minnesota media is not doing their job. They're not reporting. Um, what's happening and it's very concerning because I would say even 80 90 percent of Democrats would not approve of the agenda that's being pushed forth on us right now um, where do you want me to start well well let me ask you this <laughs> this is the first thing that I just want to ask you and, and I just I want to see where you're at what form of government do we have do we have a democracy or do we have a republic well absolutely we have a republic and one of the problems right now in Minnesota is the Democrats have what they call the trifecta, which it is, because they have total control. They have the governor, they have the Senate, and they have the House. And so one of the problems that we're seeing, though, is they are moving forth with this extreme, extreme left agenda. And one would question, because let's just break this down. Minnesota lost the Senate by 300, and I believe it's 320 votes in one Senate race in Hastings. And so if you would have flipped just that one Senate seat, they would not be ramming through this extreme agenda. And so this is not a 70% liberal state. We are really a 50-50 state and they are acting like they have this super majority and just running with this agenda again that most Minnesotans, and I'm hearing from it daily, I am hearing from Democrats daily that they do not approve of this agenda that's being pushed on us. Okay, so it's being pushed by force. But I do want to say this, and I just want to take a step back. The reason I ask you what form of government have we been given, Pam, is because when we talk about the left, I think of, let's say, the Democratic Party, because the Republicans and the Democrats, they are not constitutional. There's 101 constitutional parties. Not a one of them is lawful. We are a constitutional republic, Article 4, Section 4, and our rights come from God, not the privileges of the state, just to get that out of the way. So when we're talking about the Democrats or the left, do they also put their hands on the Bible, swearing to uphold the enumerated laws found within the U.S. Constitution? Because it's my understanding that's the same thing that those on the right are supposed to do, and they do that. So I don't want people to get confused as to thinking that 
that the left can go ahead and become a law unto themselves and the right can become a law unto themselves as well. That's why people get confused. Both sides of the aisle, unconstitutional, right? They're supposed to uphold the same laws. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And some of this legislation that's been going through, we have brought that up over and over, that they are passing laws that would not, at a federal level, that they would get overturned. And I'm not sure that they care, you know, because as many times as we bring it up, they just keep on bringing this through. It's, it's a planned agenda. What I, yes. If you can, so we started January 3rd, we were sworn in. May 22nd, our session ends. So what I, if you can, I think most people can picture this, is when they got ultimate control, they just felt like this was the green light, that they were just going to go total 110 miles per hour to that deadline, you know, to get it in. But what we're seeing and what I don't think most people understand is this has just been an abnormal session, meaning they're not even following regular procedures in committees because they have this big agenda that they wanted to get through in this time frame by that end date of May 22nd. And that's what we're looking at who, right now. Who is they? I don't know who that who that person is, but if you can picture it, there is, a, what do you want to call it, like a puppet master? There is someone that plotted out in this five-month period to get from point A to point yep. B by May 22nd. They yep. figured out the committees, the schedule, how they had to skip committees, how they were pushing through bills without fiscal notes. This this is very orchestrated. Okay, very so let's so and I totally agree, one hundred percent. I would also go back and say this too. If you looked at the last cycle of elections in the state of Minnesota, ninety nine point five percent of the state was red. If you want to play the red blue game, as they proposed, because it's a political language that's been created to make lies sound truthful. It's ninety nine point five percent was all red. So I don't care. And by the way, Pam, ninety four percent of the people in this state or in the United States. Don't believe the mainstream media, but you just got Dan saying something that's it's very very odd as to how things are going on here. And the mainstream media is pushing forth that agenda, but they're not pushing forth what is lawful and what is not lawful. What I want to ask you right now is where is the said right then to uphold the law and call for the articles of impeachment, which is found in Article Two, Section Four, and then prosecution of those Article One, Section Three, Clause Seven concerning those that are trying to push forth that which is illegal into state legislation as you well know where is the republicans to prosecute them to impeach them i i hear what you're saying absolutely bradley i, I do understand what you're saying you asked a few questions that's probably out of my legal realm but that is something that us as republicans especially when this session ends we need to be asking you know we need to be asking tough questions what happened, and then how do we fix this, and then how do we pursue in the legal manner? Because many of these things are going to have to go to the court. Okay, so but so when you're looking at let's let's say just for example this whole this no such thing God already decided man's gender and woman's gender Genesis five two. Where are these people coming off um, trying to suggest that we're going to decide now that a man can dress as a woman and be identified as a woman, which by the way contradict our laws in the United States of America, and so does sodomy. If you look at state statute, our laws in every state of our union condemned the act. Where, where are the people inside of the Capitol that are willing to stand up and do what needs to be done? Because what I see happening, Pam, everybody's talking about what the problem is, but nobody's making reference to the answer. And that's what I want to do is I want people to have the answer here, not only in the state of Minnesota, but the United States of America. We do have provision to prosecute these people. Why is everything on the table but what they need to do? Because the minute that comes up, that's going to put the fear of God in those that mean to advocate lawlessness in the state of Minnesota. Where is that? I'm curious. Yeah, and again, absolutely. I agree with you. We do have to bring this. We do have to escalate this to another level. I just don't have those answers for you right now, Bradley, because right now we have been working this agenda, and we are literally doing anything we can to slow them down, to put some sand in the gears to make this come to some kind of stop. And it's like, when I got elected, my background is sales and marketing. I was like, what do I have to offer? It was, it was you win on November 8th, you find out you win. And then when, when I woke up November 9th and I found out we lost as a state, which was really hard to believe. Yes, it was. What happened, 
what happened was not what, why, what I was hearing out the doors. It was not what I was hearing out the doors. Um, so you kind of feel like you got kicked in the stomach. You, you get the wind just knocked out of you. And honestly, I, I think my husband is a stubborn German, and I think he gave me 24 hours of feeling sorry for myself. <laughs> and he said, you know what? Get over it. What are you going to do about this? Apparently, we're going the same direction here. This is good. I want to show you some of the things that are going on down at the Capitol right now just to show you how far out things have become. And it also shows you what Pam was talking about, folks. Here, I'm going to add to it. They are behind the scenes pushing forth agendas uh, that are unconstitutional, illegal. They're trying to Europeanize America, and they're doing it uh, in the guise and under the guise of it's the left and the right warring against each other, and there's more of them than there is us, which is completely false. Saul Alinsky said, and let me remind you, uh, the enemy caused the enemy to believe there's a lot more of us than there really is. It's not divided, friends. It's a small portion uh, that is being used to go ahead and push forth agendas to tear down the Constitution. Put that in the light of what John Adams said, that our Constitution is made for a religious and a moral people. It's wholly inadequate to the government of any other. And when you, when you look at the uh, state capitol, you see Moses, you see quotes by John Locke, you, talk, you see uh, inscriptions on the building, the capitol building in the state of Minnesota. You Yours too, by the way, well, where it says the law of God is the people's safety. And folks, we have to get back to that. But let me show you what's going on down there. And then we're going to pull Pam back up in just a moment. Listen to this. And so let's talk about that. And if you want to talk about why it is that we don't have enough workers, it's because we don't let enough immigrants and refugees come to our state. And so let's talk about the complexities of the issues that we are looking at right now to fill our workforce shortage. And so let wow, isn't that crazy? Isn't, isn't that crazy, friends? Not enough workers. What say you, Pam, about what you just seen there? Yeah, that was, I, I, I sit just across the aisle from Representative Her, and as she was saying it, I literally couldn't believe what was coming out of her mouth, um, especially when their, their party has just forced on us, you know, I mean, the, the borders are wide open. We don't have safety in our country, um, but they also have forced for many, many years this whole, like, um, you know, abortion. And so it's like we have this workforce yeah. shortage. Well, what would it look like if we had not aborted so many children um, from Minnesota in the past few years? So. It's frustrating they say one thing and they're they're doing something the complete opposite. They, well, they do that all day long, but that's a reflection of the people that tolerated in the state of Minnesota and in the United States. It's been said of old that every country deserves the government that it has. Well, in this country, we, the people, are the government, and if we don't want to take responsibility for who we are and what it is that we tolerate, understanding, as you well know, that those that uh, serve we, the people, derive their just powers from the consent of we, the people, uh, well, then this is what we're going to get and it's exactly what we've been getting far too long and the american people need to send the message so let me let me address this first one so we we see in the state of minnesota where tim walls uh, who they said they, you know, was reelected re by the people, baloney, massive voter fraud. I don't care if people agree with or not there. It's common sense as to what's going on here. The people in the state, Pam, I'm not saying you're saying this, but I'm telling you this on the grassroots level, people hate his guts. They can't stand him or Keith Ellison. I said it, okay? But when I look at code, I'm, I'm curious. So what they did is they basically said, let's give those illegals, let's change the name illegal to undocumented and then let's give them license to come into the state and basically do whatever they will. But if I want to go to the airport and get on an airplane, I'm completely vetted illegally through a violation of the Fourth Amendment of the Bill of Rights. How does that work? And, and I do want to set the record straight with the question. They are not undocumented. They are illegals, period. What say you? Yeah, that's correct. We have, we have seen so much legislation come through and Every, every bill, and I think maybe some people are wising up to this, that we need to be, that every bill is just building off of another idea. And um, so we did this, you know, and this is another thing. I want people to start saying, you know, what I try to say is cute name, bad idea. Because unfortunately, too many people in our society, we just read the headline and we don't dig deep. And I'm a mother of five. I get it. We're busy. We're working. We have things going on with our kids. But, okay, Minnesota, America, we have to wake up to this bigger agenda, and we have to start really paying attention and get beyond that headline that is the cute idea. 
because, you know, they'll name it driver's license for all. And then the compassionate side of you is, well, of course, you know, if they're here working and, and I'm in an agricultural area, of course, we have people working that we want them to get to their farm. We want them to have a driver's license. They, they work off of that compassionate side. But on the other side, the Republicans here in Minnesota, we offered amendments to just have the driver's license marked simply, differently from someone who is here legally in the state of Minnesota, and that is for our voting privilege that they would not be confused for elections. Even the state of California has the driver's license marked differently. And once again, Minnesota took the most extreme position to have driver's license for all, no differentiation on that driver's license that if you're here legally or not here legally. Okay, so then where does Article 3, Section 3 come into play? Treason, treason defied, aiding and abetting foreign power. Okay, that's what it is, Pam. I, I, it, listen, it sounds extreme to those that don't pay attention, but listen, justice guards our liberty, and we as a people need to hold, by the way, a side of emotions, we need to hold to the principles that our forefathers bestowed us if we want to remain a free people, uh, and if we want to uh, go ahead and forfeit that, then, then again, we're going to get more of what we've got. When I look at federal code, Pam, 8 U.S. Code 1324, bringing in and harboring certain aliens, illegals, it's an act of treason. And as a matter of fact, it even goes so far as to say that those that made way for illegals to come into the states, uh, if they commit a crime, the person that advocated or allured them in per se, as the governors are throughout the United States, they're responsible for the crimes that they commit. So it's interesting how our law goes the other way. It's aggressive in a positive sense in working for the safety and upholding the laws and condemning the wicked and justifying the righteous. But we see it where everybody on the right, as we call it right, is on the defensive rather than on the offensive. So again, we have treason here. And, and I want to say this too, Pam. Did you know that the federal government is a creation of the states? The states are not a creation of the federal government. So why are the states acting like the federal government has more power than the states? That's another question. A lot of great questions, and I, I believe we have to get any way we can get the power back into the states' hands and give the control back to the states. But I am absolutely with you. As far as the legal stance, 100%. That is just something that I'm not totally up on, but, you know, that's something maybe when they get me out of this crazy session, I can look into some of those uh, different laws and how we can proceed or prosecute on some of those because I like how you're thinking. Amen. Okay, so here it is again. Okay, here's the next issue. Transgender Minnesota lawmaker introduces bill removing anti-pedophile language from state's Human Rights Act. I, I, so it sounds to me like they're trying to strike that vernacular within the law that condemns their crime so they can play the victim. And that's exactly what they're doing. And what they will do at the end of the day is incriminate those that are on the side of the law as they play the victim when, in fact, they're the ones not holding the shield but the spear. What say you? Right. Yeah, this was in the last two weeks. In Minnesota, we were making national news um, we became, became a trans sanctuary state. Uh, Governor Wall signed into law. Um, it's also a sanctuary state for abortion. Um, and then uh, this pedophilia, what it was doing was it was striking out the language um, in a bill. The Senate did not catch that on their side. The House caught it on our side. We did offer an amendment to not to uh, strike that and we did because it really put the democrats in a position now we're you know what is the intent of this right okay so if we strike pedophilia out of this bill we always have to ask what is the next step okay and this is where of course we we have to protect our children at all costs there is right now and anyone can look this up but you know they are trying to push an agenda of um, minor attracted people, yep. Matt, yep. or youth attracted people. And so we can't be naive to what's going. Maybe it was an innocent mistake. Maybe it was an innocent mistake, okay, because we're not supposed to question motive. But then we caught it, and it's like we need to leave that language in the bill that a sexual orientation does not qualify as someone who is a minor attracted person or pedophile. We have to we have to be very aware of that and 
not be naive to that. Okay, so here, I do want to throw this in there, and I, I think it's important for everybody to understand. Vigilante um, uh, justice is on the rise, and, and I'm not advocating for violence in any sense of the word, but I can tell you right now, people are not going to roll over in the face of a man dressing as a woman, laying for their children. But going back to the state of Minnesota, what does this say to the people, not just in the state of Minnesota, but across the country, when a said governor, Tim Walz, who's not even from Minnesota, by the way, he's from Nebraska, and Ellison's from Michigan, if you didn't know. Uh, but what's interesting is he's sitting there writing on to this illegal, unconstitutional criminal legislation, if they want to call it that, because it is not congruent with our laws. It stands outside. They are assuming authority that's never been given to them. But what kind of a message do you think it's uh, giving to the people in the state of Minnesota that you have a full-grown man who calls himself a governor? are standing there with little boys uh, trying to be girls with long hair and dresses on. What, what, what else do they need to say, Pam, for the people to actually understand what they're dealing with? Curious. What are right. your thoughts? I, I don't think this is a, a good image. And, you know, with power or, you know, pride, um, it's kind of like the devil plays his hand too far. And I believe what we're seeing right now is, look, they are in complete control. They are. So everything that we see pass out of the Minnesota State Legislature this year is on them, 100%. But, but wait a second, but wait a second, though, Pam. I, I don't I don't want it to be on them. I don't want the crimes committed against the innocent, namely our children, to be laid to them after the fact. Prevention is better than cure, and I want to start to stop the crime before it happens, and that's how we need to start to think in this country. And I'd also say this, the power is not in their hands. It's still in the people's power, but the people have to get to the point where they say enough, we're now going to lawfully deal with every single one of you. I can honestly say, Pam, I, I got to honestly say this. I think after how many years of being on the radio that you're the guest that I've had on longer than anybody else. I, I, I don't know if that makes you feel good, bad, indifferent, whatever the case might be. But this is actually a conversation that we can have because, listen, even if we have to be corrected, instructed, reproved, whatever the case is, if we're learning and we understand what the law says, we're always going to go back to that. And I hope that's where we're going right now. Um, and folks, I'm talking to Pam Altendorf. She's a representative from the 20th district. Uh, by the way, I did that correction school out there. I've done about 360 high schools across the country in 25 states, Pam. And I did your correctional institution in Red Wing there some time ago. So anyways, just to let you know that we're not green over here, no pun intended. So, uh, right. we, we were just talking and, and I'll, I'll give you as much, we got about eight minutes left and the show's over, but, and I totally appreciate you and thank you for being honest, but I did want to cover this really quick. And as far as the code go, 18 U.S. Code 2251, sex, sexual exploitation of children, is a major crime. And it's interesting, you see all day long um, individuals that are going to prison for a long time uh, advocating the same crimes that these said governors are across the United States of America. Uh, talking about a, a double standard here. Well, again, the American people have to step into play uh, and set the record straight. Also wanted to let you know that state statute 609.378 tells us the same thing. So how is a governor in the state of Minnesota advocating for crimes? It's molestation of their minds is what it is. And then I, I also understand from Walter Hudson, who we had on a couple weeks ago, uh, he had also shared with us now that they're trying to pass a bill that if the adults, the parents don't want their child to basically transition, uh, the, the, the kids can go and tell the state and the state will kidnap them and bring them to another state. That, that's an advocation and provocation for war. That, that's insane. Yeah. What say you? Yeah, absolutely. That was what I was referring to is that, that trans sanctuary bill. That was just put into law. And in fact, um, you know, so if you were in South Dakota and one parent did not want their kid to be transitioned, the other parent could take them to Minnesota. And essentially, once you're across that line, now Governor Walls in the state of Minnesota is legally going to protect a parent who kidnapped a child and not allow the state of South Dakota to get it back. So this is literally, we are, we are reaching areas that we have never seen in the United States, um, but I am with you as far as um, what is happening to our children. We have to protect our children. We absolutely have to draw a line in the sand. Um, we don't allow children to have their ears pierced until they're 18. We don't allow children to get a, a tattoo. We have laws for drinking. And are you kidding me? 
We as the state of Minnesota, we're going to allow children to be chemically changed and medically mutilated because that's what this is doing. We do have to draw a line in the sand, but going back to cute name, bad idea, they call this gender affirming care and they try to pull at the heartstrings that if you do not allow a child to transition that you are the bad person we need to wake up here in minnesota we need to wake up in the united states because this is child abuse that's exactly what it is that's exactly what it is and i'm glad that you brought that up i did want to add to that too with a question if you don't mind because i want to get to red flag laws before the end of the show we got about seven minutes left um pam where is it that the state now have children because i can't find that in the constitution i'm sorry what did you say uh, since when did the when did the state have children i, I can't find that they don't oh. have any children so now they're assuming a uh, parental authority over your children that that's that's absolutely. the united nations initiative is what it is yeah, this is it's absolutely terrible. It goes away from everything of our founding fathers, of freedom, um, and the state government. They want your child from birth, from crib, until death. And they want to have a say in that. And it's, it's going completely against our constitutional freedoms and everything that this country was built on. And we have to start pushing back on this agenda. Amen. One more question for you before we get to red flag laws. What did you think of this said lieutenant governor uh, where she wore the T-shirt protect trans kids with a knife what were your thoughts on that you know honestly when i saw that picture i my first thought was i have to be seeing this wrong i, I mean it was so disgusting to see a representative the lieutenant governor of the state of minnesota with the, it was a dagger it was a large knife yeah. on her shirt and you can look it up and i just thought what a double standard but if the democrats didn't have hypocrisy they would have nothing at all and it's like, imagine that to be flip flops and to have a Republican and to have a gun on their shirt. I mean, they would be just crucified in the media. And it was disgusting. Honestly, I could not believe what she was possibly thinking to have that shirt and to have a dagger and a large knife on that shirt. Well, I think she told you exactly who she was and who what's behind all of this right when she did it. Uh, it's been said in their confusion, they blurted out the truth. I believe that that's what happened in this particular case. Red flag laws. I just want to say this. First of all, the Second Amendment, if you read the preamble to the Bill of Rights, uh, there is further restrictive uh, measures in there to stop the government from what they're trying to do. Uh, concerning all of the amendments, they are the thou shall not to those that serve we the people but they want to go ahead and usurp the second amendments they want to outgun the people because at the end of the day we all know what that means if we look to history we will understand clearly as to what that means but i believe pam and correct me if i'm wrong i believe it's uh, basically a green light for those incumbents especially the corrupt obviously as to what we're highlighting here uh, that are looking to uh, zero in and target their political opposition by just saying, you know what, we need to pull away his guns, his means to defend himself from against people like us. What, what say you? Yeah, um, another just disgusting thing happening in Minnesota right now is they slid into our public safety bill two gun laws. Um, one is for universal background checks. One is these red flag laws. They split it in last minute, did not work it all the way through the committee meetings, you know, did not have this vetted out the way it should go through the process. Um, on the floor, I offered an amendment to take the red flag laws out. And I asked the author of this bill, um, Representative Frazier, if he knew if they had red flag laws in California. And to which I don't believe he even knew the answer to that question. He did not answer it. And the re and he, he basically spun it into emotion. Like, it doesn't matter if California has this law or not. But, you know, don't you want to save children? Don't we want to stop school shootings? So instead of going to facts, it literally drives us back to the emotion of it. Here's the fact. California does have these same red flag laws. And here's the fact. California does not have less crime by guns. Red flag laws do not work. It's a fact that um, criminals do not follow the laws. And if I was a mother, a teacher, a school administrator, a parent, a grandparent, I would be mad when you start to realize that the Democrats are trying to control and manipulate you for us to have these gun laws 
based off of fear, but also using these tragedies yeah. that have happened of shooting. They're using it to drive your emotion, to drive your fear, and all it's going to do is make it more difficult for the lawful gun owner to own a gun, and it's not going to change a darn thing with the criminals having guns. So the criminals will have the guns, crime will continue to go up, and the lawful gun owners, the ones that are actually there to protect and to help, they are going to have a tough time having their guns. Yeah, and it's interesting that they're creating this said uh, gun legislation um, that, again, it's a policy that undermines the Constitution in our Second Amendment. Uh, but it's interesting that they're doing this with armed security detail around themselves, defending them from the very people that they're supposed to support It's also or to protect. It's also interesting to note that these uh, mass murders that take place uh, happen, 94% of them happen in that of gun-free zones that have been created by corrupt politicians who at the end of the day should also be held accountable for the crimes committed against the innocent in those gun-free zones. Again, my thought, I'll hold to it. Common sense does come into play here. Um, and we need to get this right. Now, I want to say this, Pam, and I'm going to give you the last word because we have one minute left. I, I, we have to get away from this right-left paradigm because it's all been created to divide the people. Mark 325, a house divided against itself will not stand. Uh, it's it's it, it's created to pit each other against each other so that we're easily conquered. And we need to stop it and we need to start fighting the bad people as to who they are rather than each other because if we're fighting each other, we're fighting the wrong people. But I say this, if the right was doing the right thing all the time, there wouldn't be a left. I'm going to give you the last word, Pam Altendorf, and I totally appreciate your time. What is it that you would tell the people? Thank you for having me, Bradley, and you're absolutely correct. I say that all the time that we are a divided nation, and what we need to do is to start asking, who is dividing us? Who is dividing us? Because they put you know, minorities, blacks against whites, women against men, religions against religions, and they're always using that to control and manipulate us. Right now in Minnesota, we are seeing what happens when you give ultimate control to the far, far extremist left side that is not representing Minnesota or, you know, anyone really. So we have to be careful with what we're doing, and we need to make sure that we know who the real enemy is. But do not be divided. Do not let people divide us. Amen. I totally appreciate you. Good show. That was a good show, Pam, and uh, we'll get this out there for you. Yep, thank you. Totally appreciate you, kiddo. Folks, love you by what we do. We'll talk to you in 23.